Hi swimmers, Jason Tate, head coach and founder of Southwest Swim. Um, this is our introduction video for our swim at home session number four. So we've done three weeks worth already, time flies. Thank you for all the feedback on those and uh, the, actually last week's um, on Facebook alone, that, that session itself reached 17,600 people and is still growing. So thank you very much for viewing that session. I hope you enjoyed it if you actually did the session itself. Um, and again, thanks for those who are feeding back um, you know, on the session itself. Please send in pics and videos as well if you're doing the session. If we, if we can use those, that would be fantastic. Um, but yeah, all the sessions are provided free of charge and they're all on our website. So if, you've, if this is the first one you've seen of ours, Go onto our website, southwestswim.co.uk, and you'll see a link on there. Download week one, week two, week three, and they're, they're all free for you. Um, so we try and base these sessions on sessions we've delivered in the past. We know they're successful, and we know they work. I'm a Swim Swim Move certified coach down in Swindon and the Cotswolds, um, so we use those methods and those drills um, religiously through our um, video analysis, one-to-one, -one, squad sessions. So everything, everything you're doing is tried and tested um, by, by us and by our swimmers. And we're just going to give those to you in a weekly session um, to mix up your swimming, get you infused, get you um, encouraged to get in that pool if it's in the garden and it's a bit rainy, give you something different to do. Um, and the sessions are a template. I'm designing them so they're modular, so you can pick and choose parts, increase times, um, increase the number of sets you do, for example, or decrease them as well. So depending on your fitness level at any given time, or your time that you've got available, or what, just what you want to get out of the session. So very modular, and I hope you're enjoying them. Um, the week four session is going to start off with some catch development drill. This session today is very simple. One drill, lots of swim. All right, so it's a very simple drill um, swim set. So we're gonna start off with um, a, a sculling drill, basically, a skull one drill. So this is a very good drill for developing the feel of the water at the front of the stroke. If I'm swimming along here, and I hope you can see this, I'm gonna turn this way. Um, a sculling drill is just a movement, so I'm turning this way, a movement at the front. It's a sweeping action, so I'm going to sweep out and in, out and in. In a normal standard pool, it's quite easy to see, or, or sorry, for the swimmer to feel if they are roughly getting this right. Because if you get this drill right, you move forwards. It's as simple as that. If you get it wrong, you'll either stay in place or you'll go backwards. Okay, so when we're using a um, countercurrent pull or a tethered pull, the feel might be a bit different, so you've got to really focus on that drill. So it's just a movement backwards and forwards, sweeping backwards and forwards here. Okay, my head can either be in the water, and I can use my centre snorkel optionally if I want to do that. Um, that's the way I do my sculling drill. Um, or you can have your head out and bring your shoulder blades together and back a little bit. Um, where we scull in our, scull in our stroke, it... Let me fit it into you for the whole um, pattern. So we've got our recovery, so our recovery arm action over the water. Doesn't matter how you recover, whether you swing your arm relatively straight, or whether you've got that high elbow, or somewhere in between. But we want to be entering all the time with our fingertips first entry. So our fingertips enter first, and we slide into the water with our rotation. So as you can see here, I'm in the, what I call the reach phase of our stroke, and I'm reaching forwards. Okay, and I shouldn't hold that position when I'm swimming and overglide, but I'm reaching forward. I don't scull here, because if I scull here, I'm going to be very, very flat, and I'm not going to move anywhere. Either that, if I overreach my stroke and overglide, I'm going to come up and drop my elbow, and my hand's going to face forward. If I do that, I'm going to go backwards. And you'll feel that in, in a um, countercurrent or a tethered pull, because that movement here, obviously I'm going to move myself back. So where I want to scull is after my fingertips enter first and I do my reach forward, then I just tilt my wrist down, fingertips down a little bit to there, and my elbow slightly comes down as well. And this is the pattern we want for sculling. If I scull here, I am going to move forward. And that's going to give me a nice pressure on the hand. And that position here is where we want to be when we um, swim, because I can bend the elbow then and press water backwards. So it's setting us up for that catch and pull. We're going to go over and over on this on the first one because what we're going to do is 
basically go up in stroke counts. So no time on this one, stroke and sweep counts, because we're going to build it um, on that. You're going to use a pool boy, so if you don't know what a pool boy is, it's one of our most common bits of kit, it's one of these. It basically, if I move back, fits between my thighs there, aids me buoyancy. We're going to use this because it isolates the legs. When you're wearing a pool boy, you should not be kicking. Okay, the idea of a pool boy is to isolate the upper body and so the legs aren't moving. The reason we're doing that with sculling is because if I've got a kick and I'm sculling like this, which in theory will send me backwards with a pool boy, okay, if I'm kicking, I could still be moving forwards doing that action. So we get rid of the legs totally, so we know that all the feel and movement is coming from your catch in that front part of the stroke. This is a Finnis Axis boy, and I've specifically got this one out to show you because a lot of tethered swimmers are complaining that their, their feet drop, um, and that's quite a common thing in swimming anyway, um, for, for those in, you know, triathletes who haven't got a swimming background and maybe haven't necessarily got that good body position built into their stroke, and we work on that with lots and lots of people. So if you are one of those, don't worry. But the Axis boy has got holes, and those holes are for your anchors. So, and it allows for a fair amount of individual movement coming through. So as I'm rotating, I can still get that natural flow of my stroke. So if you haven't got a pool boy, look those up. The Phoenix Axis boy, um, we have them in stock here, um, but we only have one left in stock because we had a bit of a run on them recently. Um, but yeah, have a search for that, and uh, if you're looking for a pool boy in a tethered pool, that would give you more options to play around with. Okay, so we're going to use a pool boy. And we're going to do a set, a building set. So we're going to build number of um, strokes. We're going to build number of sweeps of our skull. We're also going to build speed in. And speed in. So why are we building speed? Because if you can do the movement quite slowly and get a feel for the movement as you're coming through, then as we build up the speed, you want to think about maintaining that technique on, on the way through. So the set's quite simple. We're going to do 10 sweeps of skull one into 10 easy front crawl strokes. And then we are going to do 20 sweeps of the skull drill into 20 moderate strokes of front crawl. So we're building that speed ever so slightly. And then we're going to do 30 strokes of skull one. And we're going to do 30, you guessed it, fast strokes. And then we're going to do 40, so quite a long time of skull, skull drill. 40 um, skulls is probably about a length's worth in a 25 meter pool of sculling. So 40 um, skull sweeps into 40 sprint strokes. So we're going to go as fast as we possibly can. Now the difference on this last one is, as we're going as fast as we can, I want to start you, getting you feeling the timing of your stroke and rhythm as well, going fast. So this pool boy here, that you've been wearing throughout that session up to that point, what I want you to do is open your legs. If you're wearing it around your ankles, just part your ankles and it will fall off when you start to kick. And I want you to engage your core, engage the leg kick, remember kicking from the hips and the glutes, nice long legs, loose ankles. Um, but more importantly, don't kick from the knee. We are looking for that nice long leg kick and try and brush your big toes together. So that's going to bring in our swim from there. We're going to take a minute's rest after that one. And what you can do then, you can either, I've written it to go through once on this one in our, in our set. Um, if you want to do that again, feel free to do it again. Do it two or three times if you want to before the main session. So the session is a template, it's modular, it's yours to play around with. What we're going to do after that is our 16 minute main block, okay, so um, what we're doing in here, we're going by time, so what you would need um, to do it by time is basically a, a finished tempo trainer, a little yellow device I showed you last week, pops under your hat, you can set that to 30 second blocks, and that's what we're going to, going to be using today, so <clears throat> because we're going to start on a 30 second um, increment. Um, if you haven't got a tempo trainer, um, you can use a clock. Um, or stopwatch, kind of harder to do. A Garmin, if you can set that to buzz after 30 seconds, perfect. If you haven't got any of those things, including a swim partner to shout at you with a stopwatch, um, then count your strokes. So we're going to base that on, um, you know, take equal in one stroke. So what I'm talking about one stroke is one, two. So individual strokes, not stroke cycles. 
we're going to count those strokes. So you're going to get to 30, for example, and that'll be the equivalent of your 30 seconds. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to do two lots of 60 seconds on with 30 seconds rest in between. All right. And we're going to make that pacing a warm-up pace. So about 70% effort. So nice and easy, just flowing in uh, into the stroke and getting used to that, that stroke feel. So two lots of 60. Then we're going to take one minute's rest. And then we're going to do four lots of 30 seconds on with 30 seconds rest at 80% effort. Now, if you're a club swimmer and you're, you can do all, all four strokes, feel free on this session to do a medley. I tried it with my two um, club swimmer kids the other day um, and basically we, we tweaked a session that uh, we had and they did it in a medley instead of all front crawl. So the option's open there. If you can do um, all four strokes, do it as a medley. Because what you're gonna do is four lots of 30, 30 seconds rest, 80% effort on that one, okay? Rest for another minute, and then we are going to do the fast stuff. So we're building right up. I want you to be going 90 to 95% effort. And again, you can do this in all front crawl, or you can do this as two lots of medley. And we're going to go with eight lots of one minute on, one minute off. So there's a lot of rest there, but we are sprinting. And as you get to sets five, six, seven, eight, that 60 seconds will go very, very quickly. And then we're going to come back down that pyramid once you've got there. So four lots of 30 and 30 up rest. And then with a one minute's rest. And then we're going to ease it down two lots of 60 seconds. Um, again, so basically going up the pyramid and then repeating it back down, easing off as we go. Um, and to finish with, it's exactly the same as a warm-up. So a very simple set, a very simple effective set um, on, on here. And we're just going to do that sculling pattern again, once or twice through. Um, this should feel a little bit different because you've exhausted yourself in that main set. Um, but, but yeah, we're just going to cool down using that set as well. So we're going to do that in reverse. So instead of getting faster, we're going to start fast and come down into our slow level. So we're doing that, that cool down. Um, at the end of our session, um, at the end of your session rather, then do, if you want to, just do a nice easy swim to start um, to finish off with for five minutes. I haven't written that in this week's set, that's totally optional. Um, but definitely try and do some stretch work on there as well. If you have access to the Swim Smooth Guru, um, then there's a link in there that will show you some of those stretches um, that you can use. Um, that's only in there because our squad swimmers get access to that as standard for, for um, being on board with a Swim Smooth coach. So that's our session for this week. I hope you enjoy it. Say so it's very basic. Sometimes a basic session is one of the most effective ones you can do. Um, and this is just really going to up your fitness as well as just primarily focus on one area of your stroke. So throughout this whole session, the only thing I want you to be thinking about when you're in your full flow of swim is fingertips first entry, reach, tip the wrist and then press backwards, um, pressing water backwards. Don't come down and press water downwards. Um, you'll probably notice if you're doing that if you've got a shallow pool because your hand will be hitting the floor of the pool. So I hope you enjoy it. Please feed back to me and I will see you for another session next Tuesday. Goodbye.